This program is brought to you by the Deeper Life Bible Church, located at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11. We can only touch him when we believe, when we call upon his name. That's the way that we are going to touch Jesus Christ. We ought to remember that Christ is the Christ of Christ's. before you again. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us. From morning, Lord, until now, you have been blessing us richly, and we thank you. We pray at this time as we go into your word. We ask for divine clarity. We ask for your divine presence with us, Lord. We pray God that self will go under and your divine spirit have full preeminence. Lord, grant us a receptive heart for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the Lord. We are going to move just right now quickly into the word of God. The text that we are, I have here is Psalm 43, verse 5, and Psalm 39, 1 to 17. I'm going to read Psalms 39, 1 to 7. It says, I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me, while I was musing, the fire burned, then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou art made my days as an and breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Surely, every man walketh in a vain show. Surely, they are disquieted in vain. He heaped up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Bless the name of the Lord. And we will read also Psalm 43 and verse 5 says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Now, we are looking at the word hope. And we are also going to look at crisis because those words are operative words in the theme. Also, Christ, which is more so the operative word. Hope, when you look at the word hope, it's a feeling, according to dictionary, it will tell you it's a feeling of expectation and desire, a desire for certain event or something to happen that is good. Those who have hope will be hopeful. They'll be optimistic and confident. They will not be afraid. Crisis is a time of danger, of great difficulty. And today we can look around and we will see crisis. 
crisis upon crisis, all different kind of crises. We have health crisis, we have political, economic crisis, we have emotional, mental depression taking persons, we have the coronavirus crisis, we have marital breaking up, all different kind of crisis bundled together. But I remember a quote that a pastor had said one, one time, he, he said, when the world is in crisis, God will find a way. He will make a way. He will open a door to ensure that his children are safe. Bless the name of the Lord. So as children of God, when we see crisis and hear of crisis, we ought to remember that Christ is the Christ of crisis. Bless the name of the Lord. And there's nothing too hard for him to do. And when our hope is in him, we don't have to fear. Bless the name of the Lord. There is crisis all around. We are currently in a time of crisis and it seems as if there is no hope for better. Many persons are asking, what is this happening? When you walk on the street, new normal, brethren and friends, I say to you that when I walk on the street and look around, sometimes tears come to my eye. I say, what is this? I've never seen this from I was born. I used to put on masks sometimes when I'm sweeping to prevent dust. But I've never seen everybody walking around with masks. But no, it is. That's the new normal, a crisis that we don't know when it will end. But one thing we are sure of, that it will come to an end. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Because we know the Christ of crisis. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We may be asking, when will it end? We have our own little crisis, but there is a worldwide crisis that many may be asking, when will it end? The answer is found in Christ. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So, we know that many persons, even in the Bible days, found themselves in crisis. Because the scripture that we have just read, Psalms 39 verse 1. David was in crisis. And you know, it is so remarkable, brethren. When I was reading up this scripture... It so happened that when I got up to do my devotion, I, the Lord had given me this portion before some days, but two mornings or three ago when I was doing my devotion, and I went to the daily bread and I saw this scripture. It's about the battle. It says the title of it is the battle. And when I read through the thing, I said, but wait. It's the same scripture that the Lord gave me. David was in crisis, you know. Actually, the story is two persons involved here. A soldier who his mother wanted him to give his heart to the Lord. He wanted him to preach. But here, he, that was not his desire. So he went in the army. And when he, was, when he found himself in crisis, all the, all the artillery and the bombs dropping around him, he was in crisis. He cried to the Lord 
at the time of his crisis and God helped him so that he was not killed in that war. And you know, he was kind enough and he was appreciative and he turned his life over to the Lord when he went back home. He surrendered his life and he was doing the work of the Lord. But another warrior, it says, endured a different crisis. This kind of crisis that drove him to God. But his problem arose when he avoided comeback. But as David troops fought the Amorites, listen carefully, brethren, David was backed at his palace casting more than just a glance at another man's wife. In Psalm 39, David, it chronicles the painful process, Rest restoration grew worse. He wrote, the more I thought about it, the utter I got. Now, the point is, David did something wrong. And he was in a spiritual crisis because he had no peace for the cruelty that he had done. And so David broke and his spirit caused him to reflect. He said, show me, Lord, my life end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Amid his renewed focus, David didn't despair. He had nowhere else to turn, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. When he looked around and realized that there was no hope for him, what he had done was wrong, it was sinful, it was wicked and evil, and God was wrought with him. He said, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Only God could deliver him and forgive him. David would survive his personal battle and go, go on to serve God. What motivates our prayer life doesn't matter as much as the focus of our prayer. God is our source of hope. He wants us to share our heart with him. That was from the daily bread. God wants us to share our lives with him. Our focus is in Christ Jesus in order for us to have that hope. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, we are going to look at somebody else because this woman with the issue of blood and we're going to turn our Bibles to Mark 5 verse 25 because it's not just David alone it's not just David alone who had been through crisis you have many other persons who have been through crisis this woman with the issue of blood she was not maybe in a spiritual crisis but she was in a physical one her health was depleting and to her, there is no hope. But everyone is hoping for something. You might be hoping for a job. You might be hoping to go to college, university. You might be hoping for a house or whatever it may be. But everyone is hoping. We hope for something that we don't see. Because if we don't see it, that is hope. But if we see it, it's not hope. This woman had hope was gone when he spent all his money at the doctors. He maybe gave up hope too. But here in, in St. Mark 5, and we're going to read from verse... 25 to 34. It says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and spent all that she had, 
and was nothing better but rather grew worse. There are many of us today, our situation is getting worse. But hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him in Jesus' name. When she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but the clothes, I shall be whole. Now, brethren, I am saying this, that when we are in our crisis, we want it to be a rose in our mind that if we could but just touch Jesus Christ, whatever the crisis is, will disappear. God will find a way. Bless the name of the Lord. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from that plague. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And it continues, and Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. May you and I today touch the hem of his garment that he may say this very day, who touched me? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We can only touch him when we believe, when we call upon his name. That's the way that we are going to touch Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the Christ of our Christ. He will make the difference. He will find a way to help us in our crisis. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now Jesus said, who touched me? Why he said that? Because virtue had gone out of him to this woman and healed her body. Jesus knew that somebody had extended faith only by faith we can touch him. God help our faith in Jesus' name. Bless the name of the Lord. And what is the irony of the situation? His disciples could not understand. He said, but master, look how large a crowd it is. And you are saying somebody touched you. Master, somebody must touch against you but Jesus knew better because something virtue had left his body oh bless the name of the Lord now today we want to touch Jesus Christ because that's the only way we're going to be relieved and be helped in our crisis now the woman with the issue of blood was hoping, and so she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, regardless of the crowd. I want us to understand that regardless of the crowd, she managed to touch Jesus Christ. The crowd was there, but I can imagine that woman, Christ in the middle of that crowd, she could may have bent down and bore through the legs of those people. That is how come she reached the hem and not his shoulder because the crowd was there. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now for us today, brethren, our crowd may not be a literal crowd, but there's crowd around us. So we have to press through our circumstances, whatever it may be, the coronavirus. We have to be staying inside. We lose our job. Mighty God, if we don't lose it, we have cut in our pay. Mighty God, the crowd is there. But let us press through the crowd of our circumstances and touch Jesus Christ today. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now, brethren, as we continue to look at hope in Christ in the time of crisis, 
We are constantly hoping for something. Hope make it not a shame. When we hope for something that is good, there is no way we can be ashamed. Bless the name of the Lord. But the question is today, where can we get hope? Where can we get it? The question is how, how can we get it? And the question is, who can we get hope from? Who will give us hope? There is hope in Jesus Christ. The songwriter says there is hope in the Lord. There is hope in King Jesus. There is hope in God. Bless the name of the Lord. For us to possess the hope, brethren, that will help in time of crisis, we have to bow at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ will meet us there. They that come to him, he will no wise cast us out. We have to bow our knees. He's not going to just force himself on us. We have to recognize that we are in a crisis and we need Jesus Christ and run to him. The songwriter says, and I will run to you to the word of truth, not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. My mind goes back to the prodigal son who took all his possession from his father and he went and he went out there and he spoiled all that he had. He wasted it. Oh, bless the name of the Lord until crisis reached him. But when the crisis reached him, what did he do? What did he do? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He rose up in his mind. Brethren, we have to go back in the, our heart and mind and find our way back to Jesus Christ. This prodigal son, he said, I will arise. Oh, bless the name of the Lord and go to my father. Even if I am not the son again, if I'm not classified as a son, even as a servant. But Jesus Christ today, if we rise up and go to him, he will receive us. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He will not cast us out. So that is where we can find Christ. We can hope, find hope in Christ. We go to the foot of the cross. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And how we can find him, we repent, turn our lives over to him, start from there, and we are on our way, he will do the rest. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Who will give us hope? Christ will give us hope. Let us turn our Bibles to First Peter. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and it said blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to my abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead so as we see it brethren we can only get hope in Christ. He provided that hope for us already. Long time he provided. When he laid down his life on the cross. When he said it is finished. Oh bless the name of the Lord. Man redemption has been paid. Glory to God. With Jesus Christ. Which according to his abundant mercy. Has begotten us again unto lively hope. So we can find hope in Christ Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us look at how Mary hope was rekindled. When we look, brethren, at the time when Jesus Christ was taken and crucified on the cross by men, bless the Lord, I want us to reflect on his disciples 
I want us to imagine how the disciples had lost hope. They took my Savior and they crucified him and they buried him in a tomb and everybody hung their head. All hope is gone. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. But is all hope gone? Hope is not gone, bless the name of the Lord. They went back to their several place and they start doing their own thing. But on the third day, when it was the third day, Mary, Mary went to the tomb. St. John 20 and verse 11, verse 11 to 16. But Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked in the sepulchre and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus laid. I want us as we hear the word to picture something in our mind. Try seeing the tomb with the two men sitting there. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. So you could see right there that Mary had lost hope. Also the disciples, she don't know where they laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned himself, herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Oftentimes, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is right by our side and we don't even know it. We are so cumbered and burdened with the struggles and the hardship that Jesus Christ is there and we don't see him. May we see him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seek thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. Said unto him, Sir, if thou art born him, hence tell me where thou art led him. And I will take him away. That was Mary's request. Oh no, she don't recognize that is Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Mary. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus said, Mary. Oh, glory to God. When Jesus called her name, that was the time she recognized it was Jesus Christ, her Savior. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Glory to God today. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We hope this program was a blessing to you. Feel free to call us for prayer and counseling at 876-923-1040 or 876-631-7108 or you can WhatsApp us at 876-451-8509. You can also visit our church location at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11, on Sundays at 9 a.m.